Uh, I'm Scott Renshaw, the Arts and Entertainment Editor for Salt Lake City Weekly, and I'm here at the Coffee Garden at 9th and 9th for a chance to talk with Alan Hebertson at the Coffee Garden. He's going to help escort me through the delicate process of my first cup of coffee. So Alan, I just wanted to know first, do you remember your first time? I do. Um, well, I come from a, an old Mormon family, and my um, my father's mother used to have a little coffee um, on a pretty regular basis, and she wouldn't put it on the table before the meal had been blessed and prayed over, but then the coffee would come to the table, and she'd bring it with cream and sugar, and I sit coffee the first time, from, probably from a spoon that she held. And how old was it? A kid. Just like, you know, little, like three, four, five, I have no idea, but just a sip of coffee. She liked green tea that way, too, so. So when did it turn into your passion, your career? Well, it turned into my career when I um, lost my job at a hotel years and years ago and found myself with six months of unemployment and coffee was just starting to get started um, anywhere as, as the trend that it has become. So it was 1992 and I had six months of unemployment and time to put together what I kind of drink about. So here I am, not sure of what to do with my coffee. How, how does a beginner start? How, how, how do you get someone to try something that might not be for them, but wants to know if it's, if it's going to be the right thing? Well, first let me, let, let me reassure you that if this doesn't convert you, it's okay. It's okay not to be in love with coffee. Um, but for the most part, um, just the way that um, alcohol beverage sellers get you because their alcohol is really nasty. And, and you know, depending on what you mix that first thing with, it can get you quite hooked. And um, coffee is a little less insidious. But um, I just like I had my first coffee with cream and sugar, that's really kind of what I recommend if you're having coffee the first time. Don't be afraid to go sweet, don't be afraid to add flavor. Um, What's going to be your suggestion, your recommendation? I would suggest, um, if you are a coffee virgin, to go with more milk than coffee and go for something sweet, caramely, you know, whatever your favorite family of flavors are. If you like fruity flavored, we can do a fruity flavored coffee. If you like nut flavored, I think that caramel is a particularly nice flavor with this coffee. So that's the direction I kind of push you towards. I place myself in your tender hands. All right. There we go. Still has that quality. I wasn't quite. I have a wife who drinks it, and so I know the smell. I wasn't quite expecting that. I'm not hooked yet. I need to work on it. It'll need to work on me. The, the, important, the important thing is that you taste this before you're 40 years old. Oh, I'm not before 40. I'm past 40. Well, okay, 50. So, um, what do you think? I think it's more on the back of my tongue than I thought. I thought, I, mean, I guess, I was still thinking somehow along the line there would be almost more of a cola quality to it. That I feel I could taste that, uh, that happy sort of slight bitterness. It's just, it's kind of hovering on the back of the tongue. It does. It doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. That's called the finish. Um, it can sometimes taste um, kind of nutty. It always has a roasty um, flavor to it. Um, it's also why uh, a glass of water is a, what a lot of people, you know, they, they, they take a chaser and it kind of cleanses your palate. It leaves some of the coffee flavor there. It, 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 coffee is a, a, bitter is one of its characteristics, but you know, you don't want it overly bitter, you want the bitterness to balance out with the, the aroma and the, the caramely flavors and the nutty flavors that are part of the bean. It's got all of it in there, but bitter is kind of what you, what you remember the first time you have coffee.